Welcome to the Full Nelson. Today I'm going to be comparing these three 22 handguns. Here on the table I have a Browning Buckmark Contour URX, I have a Ruger Mark IV Tactical, and a Taurus TX-22 Competition. All of these 22 handguns are phenomenal handguns, and I recommend them to, or I would recommend them to anyone who's in the market for a quality 22 handgun. With that said, there are some differences between these three handguns, and some of them do certain things better than others and vice versa, so I'm going to go over some of that to hopefully help inform you about which one might be a better fit for you depending on how you're going to use it. Now, when it comes to the Buck Mark and the Ruger Mark IV, some people might immediately notice, well, this isn't threaded and it doesn't have a railed amount of light on it. Well, there are models of the Ruger Mark IV that also are not threaded and do not have a top rail or a bottom rail. And there are models of the Browning Buckmark that do have a rail underneath the barrel for a light, and they are threaded for a suppressor. So there's enough different varieties of these two handguns that if you're looking for those features, you can get a Buckmark that has them or a Ruger that has them. So those differences don't really matter because, again, you can you can get whatever it is that you need in that regard. So. I'm going to start off with the things that the Taurus TX-22 does better than these other two firearms. The, re the thing that makes the Taurus TX-22 such an exceptional firearm is one, it holds 15 rounds instead of 10 rounds like these other two firearms, and it mimics perfectly the most common carry and self-defense handguns that are in circulation today, meaning it has a reciprocating slide. It has a trigger that either is or mimics a striker fired trigger and a Glock, a Smith & Wesson M&P or SIGs or any of those where you have the bit of take up and then the trigger breaks, okay. The controls on it, the magazine release, all those things are very similar to most modern carry guns. The takedown is very similar to most modern carry guns and I'll show you how to take this gun apart now. So you will need to remove your muzzle device. On the competition model, you can keep your optic installed. We'll take your muzzle device off. You need to take the magazine out. And you'll pull these tabs down right here. Just like on a Glock, there's a little place here on both sides. You're going to grab that and you're going to pull the trigger while pushing the slide forward. Hold on, there we go, and then it'll come off. Okay, now we'll field strip this the rest of the way. You have your uh, recoil spring here, and you've got your barrel, which will pull out just like so, and the optic is attached to the barrel on the TX-22. That is one thing that is very unique about this design that is not common to most carry guns today, but all of the rest of this is very common, meaning the barrel comes right out on a Glock or Smith & Wesson M&P or any of those. The field stripping is very similar. So we're going to put this barrel back in place here. And we're going to take our recoil spring. Hold on, let me make sure I've got this. Feels like that's not right where it's supposed to be. There we are. Yeah, I just didn't have it down. Okay. Take this. We'll take our slide. Hold on. There we go. Okay. Now we're together. Put our magazine back in. All right, so the wrong end. <laughs> that little O-ring acts as your, you know, mimics like a crush washer or your timing nut or anything like that for muzzle devices. Set screws that you have for other ones, it just creates a little pressure so that you can turn this in it. And it doesn't move while you're firing it because it's just a 22. it works great. So that's how you field strip the TX-22. 
So the TX-22's ergonomics, as I mentioned, are similar to most modern handguns. The trigger is similar. The fill in hand is similar. The takedown and disassembly are, are similar. That's why it's going to be an awesome training tool if you're trying to get prepare somebody to be able to operate modern day carry firearms. Now the Ruger Mark IV, I'll show you the takedown on it. One of the things that sets these two firearms apart, and you don't have to take the magazine out of the Ruger Mark IV to field strip it, that's all, just leave it in to show you that. You do need to rack the bolt back. This one, unlike some guns where you want the trigger depressed to be able to take it apart, this needs to be cocked to take it apart, okay? So you don't want the hammer to fall forward or it won't come apart. In fact, I'll demonstrate that for you. There's a little button right here on the back. If I press that button now, it won't come apart. If I rack it, it still won't come apart. The gun has to be racked or, or cocked, and the safety has to be on. Those two things have to happen, and then you can press, hold on to the barrel like this, press the button, and you can fold it, or just it just hinges right off just like that, okay? And to further field strip it, you pull your bolt out just like this. You can put your solvent and stuff in there and on this bolt, clean it up. Got that a little cockeyed. There we go. And you're going to take this, it's going to fit this groove right here in your... And this pin is going right back in here, okay? Push that button just like so, and now it's back together. And that's how you field strip this, this handgun for maintenance. So pretty easy to take these two apart for maintenance purposes, which if you shoot a lot and you don't like cleaning your guns, these are going to be nice and easy to pull apart and clean. The Browning buck mark, on the other hand, is a little more complex. Browning, I don't even think, recommends that you fully disassemble it. They say that you should just rack the bolt back to the slide stop like this, spray your solvent in, clean the breech face, run your bore snake through the barrel, clean this. Uh, I want to call it a bolt face, but it's probably your slide or whatever anyway. Clean this out and the guide rod and all that kind of stuff, this little guide rod that's in here, and that's it. That's all they recommend doing. Now, I know for a fact that after you shoot thousands and thousands of rounds through one of these, you're going to get contaminants back inside of these little holes in here. And when you go to rack this, you'll feel grit. And it will get gritty enough that you might start having malfunctions. And when it gets to that point, you need to fully field strip it. And that's a more complex endeavor, and it's not something I'm going to show you today. But you take an Allen key, and in this case, you'll pull this top rail off. And then that will expose all of the internals, the guts in here for your firing pin, assembly, and all that kind of stuff. And you can get to all of that and completely clean it apart. You can pull this whole bolt section out and all of that kind of stuff. Anyway, more complex endeavor. So if you want something that's easy to field strip and clean, these are great options. If you want some good training tool to prepare people for other firearms, this is a good option now. Where these two firearms are superior to the TX-22 is if you need a firearm that is supremely accurate. These things shoot better than off-the-shelf rifles. Like, these will like outshoot 1022s, Marlin Model 60s. I mean off-the-shelf 1022s, not highly modified, any of that. Um, they, this will shoot an off-the-shelf 1022 Marlin Model 60 and Remington 597s, any of that. They are, they are supremely accurate. And their triggers lend themselves very well to shooting accurately. The triggers are a step above the Taurus TX-22, at least the triggers that I have in them now. The Bone Stock Ruger Mark IV trigger is probably not much better than the Taurus TX-22, but this full Quartzen trigger that I have in here, which I guess that's probably not a really fair way to compare it because I'm doing this comparison video based off of the way I have these guns set up now compared to this. And I flipped the stock spring in this and did some trick I found out about to lighten this trigger a little bit. That made it way better than the TX-22 competition. And the Ruger Mark IV's trigger wasn't all that great from the factory. I changed it out. In fact, I didn't think it was acceptable. Changed it out for a bull quartz and trigger, and now it's 
has, it's just phenomenal. Now, I haven't seen a lot of options for aftermarket triggers for the Taurus, but I'm not sure you're ever going to get a polymer frame gun to have the break that you are with a metal frame gun just because of the way the trigger pins and all that, all that stuff interface in there. You can really take all of the creep out of, uh, out of the triggers on these. So, and the Browning Buckmark has almost no creep to begin with. The only thing it really needed was just to be lightened up a hair. And like I said, you can do that with all the stock parts. There's just, you have to open it up and flip a spring. But anyway, so if you need guns that are really accurate, these are going to be better than the TX-22. If I personally were going to take a gun out to go hunt jackrabbits and other small critters, I would take these two over the TX-22 any day. So that's where these would be a better option than the Taurus TX-22, and I've already explained where the Taurus is superior to, to these two. And as I mentioned, if cleaning is an issue, well then these are going to be better to clean. So those are all, all considerations that I think a person ought to, ought to think about before they they decide which one of these would be a, the best fit for them. It really does depend on how you're going to use them or what you're going to use them for. That concludes my comparison of these three 22 handguns. I think they are all excellent. As I mentioned, you can't go wrong with any of them. I think Browning Buckmarks may be one of the most underrated 22 handguns out there. I hear people talk a lot about these, but hardly ever about this. These guns, the way they come from the factory, are just phenomenal. The feel in hand is phenomenal. I've always been a fan of these. They're, they're just great guns. But anyway, but there is no, a, is no perfect answer here. It just depends on what you're using them for. So that concludes my comparison. If you guys have any questions or comments or any experience with these 22 handguns or any other 22 handguns that you would like to share with the community to help them know what your experience has been, please feel free to leave those comments in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.